going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. Quick video for you guys today and it's going to be a comparison between our old Apple Watch Ultra 2 that, uh, that we used for, damn, since it was really unveiled. It was a great watch, still is, but I think a lot of people are going to be comparing this and debating about picking one of these up or the new Series 10 that uh, just came out yesterday. So, there's a lot to like about both of these watches. I don't want to make this video very technical in nature, but I do want to show you them side by side and uh, really show you the differences between the builds, between the materials, and the actual pure size of these watches. Let's go. So first things first, let's move the iPhones over. And right off the bat, when you look at these two watches, you can tell they are actually very, very comparable display-wise. Let's zoom in a little bit for you guys. So. As you can tell here, these displays are tremendous. The new Series 10 does not get quite as bright as the Apple Watch Ultra 2. However, both in bright daylight still are very easy to see. As far as how quick everything is, the chips in both of these work very well. Even on the older chip in the Ultra, the SIP chip is still very good. The pure borders on these uh, displays actually are again very comparable you can actually see that even in apple's material and marketing material they try to make it seem like the bezels weren't very large clearly you can see them here and yeah they're significant it almost looks like they took a series 9 and squashed it basically flattened it all out i will say from day-to-day -day operation the only thing i really miss in addition to the extra battery life on the ultra 2 is the ability to have that display kind of turn red when it's dark. I wish the Series 10 had it. If somebody knows that it does and I'm missing it, please comment down below and let us know. But otherwise, everything else has been great. As you can see here too, significant difference in sizing on the actual watches themselves. Um, the crown, physically smaller. The button on the side is larger though. It's a little more pill shaped and obviously the speaker grill is really kind of not very viewable unless you have the light hit it just right as you can see there it's a tiny 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 pinholes in uh two little sections here whereas opposed to having that one large uh kind of grill right there for it obviously you have the action button on your apple watch ultra 2 unlike the series 10 you're not going to get that i never really used it not a big deal there and the back of the devices, as you can see, are still, sensors are aligned basically the same way. There's not a ton missing there. So, aside from that, as far as, like I said, day-to-day -day usage and jumping around, everything's been very smooth, been phenomenally well. As you can see here, jumping into the weather app and all that, they look very good. Same amount of information is gathered on both of these devices. The screens show up really well. I do have the font a little smaller on the Series 10 just because I like getting more information in. Um, but you can see here just as well, they look comparable. That Both of these watches you can use as a standalone speaker now. If you're listening to music, I haven't used it personally very much. Let's see if we can go into music here and kind of give you guys a listen. So before we get copyrighted, that's kind of what it sounds like there. Let's go ahead and get it on the Series 10. And here is how it sounds on the Series 10. So neither are going to blow the doors off of any other speaker system, let alone your phone as well if you want to play it through that. But you do have that option at least if you so choose. The smart stacks and everything have been just very ben beneficial. That is an uh, watchOS 11 feature more than obviously a watch feature, but it is still there. I will say also I do miss this watch face. I don't know why they won't bring it over to the Series 10 now. It's still exclusive to the Ultra, so if you like all of these data-heavy watch faces, that is still not available, unfortunately. The modular Ultra is still purely on the Ultra. So, having said all that, 
I guess one of the other big callouts is how the Series 10 can only go down to 1 hertz, and you can actually have a second hand now on your lock screen. So if you are actually, let me change the watch face. It only works with two watch faces currently, but if you have one of them selected, and let's see if I can find it really quick. Flux is one. So now while you have your always on display on, it will actually keep ticking away the seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock it. If it wants to go turn on, I'll just put it on really quick and make it easy for you. And that way I can put the ultra on as well. So that's the regular watch face. And then as you can see there, whoops, trying to not activate it. It is still counting down as you can see. The second hand is moving up the display. So I actually like that. I think it's a very neat feature. Let's go ahead and put the Ultra on. So side by side, you can see just how comparable they are. And let me actually switch the watch face to it so you can get a good idea of that. That is exactly the difference you're getting. 49 millimeter casing as opposed to 46 but the displays are very, very comparable. What do you guys think? Are you interested in getting the Series 10 or would you prefer getting only the Apple Watch Ultra 2? Battery life is going to be your biggest gain from the Apple Watch Ultra. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.